Hello and welcome to the IX Network Macro Recorder training video. In this video we're going to be covering the following subjects. Chapter 1 will introduce Test Composer. In Chapter 2 we'll briefly review the different features of Macro Recorder. In Chapter 3 we'll show how to make a recording using the Macro Recorder and then in Chapter 4 how to edit that recording. Finally in Chapter 5 we'll show how to play back that recording and then we'll wrap it up with a summary. Before we get started on reviewing the macro recorder feature, I'd like to take a couple of minutes and give you a brief introduction to Test Composer. So first thing I want to do is show you how to bring up the Test Composer interface. Now the Test Composer interface is not accessible from our overview page that you're seeing here now. So you can bring up Test Composer by clicking on any one of the other interfaces here. And I'm working in a blank configuration so there is no information to display. But you can get to Test Composer from either the Quick Menu or from the Automation Ribbon. The Test Composer interface is our basic working area for creating sequences of commands that you might want to execute while working in IX Network. The basic premise for Test Composer is to be able to create commands. One way to do that is to click on the plus sign and have a command automatically inserted. There are lots of different kinds of commands that can be executed from inside Test Composer. One of them is the simplest called the trace statement. The trace statement allows me simply to put some message to the screen as part of an execution of a step. By creating that command and then right clicking on it, we can play that step back. And when we play it, we can see the message that comes up in the execution message window. So fundamentally, this is where execution of steps occurs. Now we can also run an entire sequence of steps, but we'll get to that later. For more information about the Test Composer and how to use it, I suggest that you watch some of the videos on Test Composer, such as Duck Configuration and Procedure Creation. So now let's talk a little bit about the Macro Recorder itself. There are a couple of features I'd like to point out before we get started. The first one is the ability to insert sleep commands between the recorded steps. What this feature allows you to do is to set the pace at which the script run plays back. Macro Recorder will remember how much time you spend between executing commands while the recorder is running and insert an appropriate sleep command in between. The insert snapshot when starting a recording allows the co test composer and the macro recorder to take a configuration snapshot of the configuration that you're working with and then restore that configuration when the script plays back. You can have this configuration snapshot restore command inserted automatically when you start recorder and you can also create configuration snapshots by pressing this at any time during the recordings. And here is the start recording button itself. So let's go ahead and get started and press the start recording button. Now notice it created a procedure for me automatically and it created a run procedure so that when I play back my whole script it will automatically call my recorded script. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ports to my configuration. So I'm going to click on this button and it brings up my port uh, configurator and I'm going to select the ports that I want to use. So I'll pick these two ports off of my chassis and add, add them to my configuration and press OK. Notice how it created the new steps inside the macro recorder. First it added that chassis to my chassis list and it added a set of commands to add each one of the ports. And if I expand one of these you'll see that there were numerous sets of configuration commands that were added to my script in order to add that sing those ports. Notice the first command is a configuration add and the other ones are configuration sets. So it first adds the port to the configuration and then it configures that port with the default values. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the name of one of my ports. Remember my recorder is still running and if I ever uh, 
am not sure about it, I can always look at my menu bar and see the blinking red light. So notice that it added two configuration set commands, one on vport1 and one on vport2. Now if I'm curious as to what is actually being set in this command, I have two options here. One option is to look at the uh, more detailed view of the steps by changing the view to detailed mode. And the way I do that is I go to my test setup and I say show detailed. Now I can see that that configuration set command is actually setting the name property to port A. The other way I can check to see what's happening is to open the command editor by clicking on the edit button and it'll automatically bring up what we call our tweakables editor. This allows me to see exactly what is being edited and what property is being set. I can modify this command at this point if I'd like and change other attributes as part of the same command. If I wanted to change the type from Ethernet to something else, I can just go in and pick from the drop down list and it will change it according to my selection. And at the bottom you can see a preview of the total command. Now you never have to create these commands, but it's nice to be able to see what the syntax might look like. Now, without going into a lot of detail about this, I'm going to go ahead and load up a pre-configured script uh, so that you can see some of the additional features. One of the nice things about IX Network is this overview. I can tell immediately that both of the ports that I have in this configuration have come up. I can also go and look at those to make sure that they are in fact up and ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the composer here. And this time instead of creating new objects, what I'm going to do is run through a sequence of actions that I'm going to want to automate and play over and over again. Before I start recording though, I want to make sure that I'm going to set my sleep command so that I can set the pace at which my commands play back. So I insert my sleep between, then I hit macro recorder, it automatically creates my procedures, and the first thing I want to do is start up my protocols. So I'll go and do a start all. Notice that the OSPF is gray right now, and I'm going to wait for it to turn green before I proceed. Now I'm going to start up my traffic. So I'll click on traffic. Notice that it put the sleep command in right after the start protocols and before the apply config. And then it included the command to start the traffic as well. So if I look at my traffic flow, I'll see that my stats are running and I'm receiving and transmitting my packets. And I can see that here's my port uh, line rate for port A. So I'm going to increment this a little bit. And as I do that, it inserts another command into my script. If I wait a few seconds and increase it again, it'll add another command. And maybe I take it back down and they'll say go ahead and stop the traffic. And that's the sequence that I want to repeat over and over again. So now I can go ahead and stop my macro recorder. And I have a, a sequence of commands that can be repeated over and over. So now let's go ahead and see how we can modify this script to be more interesting. One of the things that I might want to do is I might want to take that sequence of changing the line rate and repeat it over and over again. And rather than recording it, each time I want to change it, I can just take the sequence and modify it. So let's say that this particular sequence of commands here, I want to repeat 10 times. So I'll go ahead and right click and say place inside of a for loop. And it's set up so that this for loop will play 10 times. So now I'm going to play this script back and we'll be able to see the script running. There's a couple of ways that I can play this script. One is from the composer ribbon. I can say play the selected script only. The selected steps would just be the ones that are highlighted. Or I could play all of the steps. But the other place to play it is from the home ribbon. And you can see I have a list of the uh, procedures that were created for me. So I'm going to go ahead and play the one that I recorded and I'm going to watch my messages flow by and you can see the green line is indicating which 
step is being executed. The other thing that I can do while I'm running my script is I can also set breakpoints. Once a step hits a breakpoint, it'll turn yellow and it'll pause the execution of the step. I can then uh, continue to play. And each time the loop uh, plays, I'll be able to have the breakpoint stop. Also, when I hit breakpoints, I have the ability to step over or step out of individual steps so that I can use this as a full debugger. I can also look at variables that are created during the, the ver uh, test. I'm going to disable my breakpoint now and let the test complete. My script has now completed. The next thing I want to show you is how to use the configuration snapshot. Before I start my next Composer macro recording, I will ins enable this, insert snapshot when start recording. So now when I start the macro recorder, the first thing it will do is take a configuration snapshot. Unlike the procedure that I created before with macro recorder, this one will actually restore the configuration back to a known state before it executes any of the other steps. So any changes that I make at this point during the recording will get rolled back before I replay the step. So now I have a second procedure here and if I look at the home ribbon I can see that I have multiple options here so I'll choose the second one. And at this point, it's restoring the configuration back to the way it was when I started the script. Notice that the ports are back to their original names. And the configuration of the mask within my route ranges is back to its default values. And if I look now, I can see that my ports have probably renamed because they've been the commands to rename them has been executed. And my routes have my routers have been disabled. And the mask on my route ranges have been updated. So by playing back this procedure, I was able to go from an initial state of a configuration to a modified state by simply playing that procedure. So to summarize what we've covered today, we've covered the basics of Test Composer and how commands are added. We've also covered how Macro Recorder is used to automatically create these Composer commands. These Macro Recorder commands can also include sleep commands to allow the commands to be executed at the same pace that they were recorded. Modifying the com Macro Recorder commands is also done through the Tweakables editor. Configuration snapshots are also used by the composer to reset the configuration back to a known state. And playing back the recorded sequences is simple and is done from the menu button or from the ribbon. We hope this video has been useful. Thank you very much.